all of this, what's happening right now is something that I will cherish for the rest of my life. Anything is possible if you just believe and play with confidence and stay true to yourselves. So do that for me, Euro. Please. gets better together. I'm sure that everyone uh, will watch LEC to learn from us. I think Europe definitely has the talent to be the best league in the world. If all the best players get on the same teams, I think the peak of European League of Legends can be the best in the world, definitely. Two years in a row, we went to the World's Final. Even if we lost against China, it's fine but we are this close. You should be fans of Mad Lions because we are one of the craziest teams. I want the LEC back in 2020. Don't worry, Reckless. We can take care of that for you. One, two, three. I want, want the, the LEC back so I can stand in the chat. I want the LEC back in my life. Rap battles, Betty, Betty, feeling all right. I want the LEC back tonight. I want the LEC back. I want the LEC Whoa, 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 whoa. Maybe a bit more auto-tune over there, but for the rest, you sounded amazing. <laughs> However, we've got an entire hour of Ready Check pre-show to get through, so I'm going to pause this, so let's go. <laughs> yeah.
if I think um, LEC is gonna be the best league in the world. I think at some point it is bound to happen. I expect 2020 will be my best year yet, especially with, as it's with this team around me. I think if I can't make it this year, then I won't make it at all. The LEC last year has been really exciting. And I expect 2020 will be even more exciting since I can uh, make it even farther. If we can be good here in Europe, we're going to be somewhat dominant in international competitions as well. If we win here, we can be the best in the world. of the 2020 League of Legends European Championship season. I am Quickshot and I am so glad to be back. Before we get to the new season, before we dive into all the incredible games we have in store, we wanted to take some time to look back at 2019. I'm joined by Froskuren and the newest member of the on-air talent team, Yamato Cannon. Welcome to the show, Yamato. Thank you very much. It's uh, an absolute honor and honestly a privilege. You get to shop around and I think in the off-season this felt like uh, home for me. I really am excited to see what we can do together, what content we create. Frosk, what an insane year. We look back, we're going to spend the next 20-odd uh, so minutes just looking at the games, the teams. I mean, what stands out for you? Uh, I mean, it's kind of about where you want to put your goalpost, really. Like, I think a lot of European fans, maybe just after World Championship, it tastes a little bit bitter. But then if you look at the collective year, I don't think that there's any way as a European fan that you can be disappointed what happened domestically or internationally. Like, you cannot take that away from the LEC. No, you absolutely can't. I mean, it was the dream season. Um, every single split was competitive. We had crazy playoff stories. Uh, the games were incredible. It was the first year that the LEC was, you know, rebranded, introduced. I mean, Yamato, what stands out? I think what stands out the most to me is just the summer split playoffs, considering we had two best of five series between uh, easily the two best teams in the region. Went all the way to five games. It was so close. Something could have changed the entire impact of time, and all of a sudden, G2 maybe became in the second seed or something else. This is how close it was. I felt like it was 10 years in the making. We celebrated our 10-year anniversary. We got the G2 versus Fnatic that went the distance to all five games, and we got it twice, and it was just like the cherry on top of kind of everything else collectively in the season. And the thing is, was uh, crazy was that getting to those playoffs was dramatic both times. It's going to sound a little bit like a meme for anybody that was watching, but hashtag every game counts. <laughs> it was real. Like, it, it mattered. I mean, towards the end of the summer split, I particularly got invested in the Rogue and the XL storylines, two new organizations, to you know, this tier of play. And I got bought into the Rogue hype train. There was a real shot they could have made Worlds. I think there's always going to be that, that conversation about closing the gap. And it felt like G2 in particular just kind of steamrolled, like closed it themselves and looked around at Europe and was like, what else do you guys have? But the fact that all three European teams made it out of group stage. The fact that we did have Excel and Rogue come down to the very line, that Origin was right there. They were like a single game away from also representing themselves shows how competitive the split was. Yeah, for sure. Even as a competitor within the league, I felt like as we progressed, all of a sudden there were no like free wins. You know, there were no like, yeah. oh, we face these guys, we can relax. Everything was kind of, oh, we need to prepare, we need to look what they pick, we need to prepare some bands. It was intense. Now, talking about intensity, what was it like playing against G2? Oh, oh right? my like, goodness. How do you prepare against them? You know, it was definitely, it was it was a learning curve because the first time we faced them, I prepared for everything and that's the biggest mistake you can do. <laughs> the, you the best, can't prepare for everything. You can't. Even practicing against them was so confusing because you just stop believing everything that you ever believed in. They just break the laws of League of Legends and you just practice and you just have to stick with, to what you believe in and move on. The same way when we faced them, we saw the Garen. I was like, okay, these are the things you need to think about when it comes to Garen, but we focus on our own thing and it worked. Well, I definitely <laughs> want to come back to that in just a moment because the team that dominated in EU and beyond was G2, and their CEO is sitting down with Law. 
Thanks, guys. Have you been listening to what they were saying? 2019, an amazing year for EU. Do you agree with them? Yeah, 2019 was uh, amazing, you know, in general. Not only for you 2 but for you in general, because uh, I feel like every team was able to push each other, uh, you know, really hard, which makes every other team, I, I guess, better, you know? So, they, you know, we got better as a region. That's a good thing. Would you say it was, it was the best year you ever had? Um, yeah, it's, it's got to be this year, the best year we, we, we ever had, you know, in, in, in League of Legends, definitely. Because, you know, winning MSI is something that we were very close with, uh, you know, to, 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 to make happen. Some time ago against SKT, we lost 3-1, but, you know, we, we, we dreamed, you know, and we created, I remember, a content piece that it was just me talking to the camera and I was saying, I was saying, yeah, SKT created a monster. And then you see the comments and everybody was like, yeah, you know, you'll never beat them, blah, blah, blah. And then you saw this year that, that you know, we accomplished it and we won MSI. And, and you know, looking back, that actually aged uh, quite well. Uh, like, unlike other stuff I've said, but... <laughs> well, I mean, looking back on that here, how do you reflect on it now that you had time for it to let it sink in, in a way? Well, you know, it, it, when, when a year goes that well, it's really hard to keep yourself, um, you know, self-critical, right? It's, it's really hard to keep, to keep being self-critical and focus on, on, on growth and improvement and progress because everything went really well. But the reality is that we could have done things better, and, and I'm glad that the whole team, uh, myself included, were humble enough to, you know, after the year was over, after the season was over, uh, you know, we gathered our thoughts and said, what could have been better? And then, you know, unlike what people may, may think, we actually just worked, you know, super hard on understanding what those things are, and we tackled them. So I think we're readier, uh, readier, that's not a word, more ready than before. It's a new year, as you said, new resolutions, new everything. What would be the new year resolutions for G2 in 2020? New year resolutions for G2. Well, you know, I, I want to make sure we keep having fun, you know? And if you watch our content in YouTube or uh, otherwise in social media, you'll, you'll realize really quickly that, that, you know, it's what we do, we have fun. If you, enter, if you enter our office, everybody's like laughing and having a good time. It's hard, it's hard work, you know, but the reality is that, you know, everybody's having a really good time. The team is having a good time, even though it's a hard work, but you know, everybody seems to be having a lot of fun. So I hope we can keep that fun up. I hope we can keep, you know, making people happy. We have this internal slogan, which is, if you want bad news, you know where to go. Uh, if you want good news, just follow G2. That's a nice saying. I think we should keep this one in mind. Thank you, Carlos. Looking Thank you so much. Looking forward to seeing G2 today, new lineup, new bot lane. <sighs> I'm really excited. We're all really excited. Thank you very much. Back to you guys for Ready Check. Woo! Thank you very much, Carlos and Law. Oslo and G2 are kicking off the season with a matchup against Mad Lions, looking to continue their success from last year. Over the past years, Europe uh, and many regions have kind of looked to the competition, have looked to Korea, have looked to China to replicate what success looked like. Last year, thanks to G2 winning MSI and them breaking all of the rules that existed in the game, it felt like the world was looking at us. Do you think that's fair to say, Yamato? For sure. I think when it comes to what the positions used to be, it was like top lane bruisers, mid lane mages. The, it's, just, it's just a position on the map. That's what it means at this point in time, because everyone's kind of playing everything everywhere. It's just rock, paper, scissors. You pick counters and you figure something as spicy up, like, like G2 always do. In China, G2 were known as the artists, and it was in reference to this idea of how creative and how uh, beautiful they could sculpt around the map. Uh, now that Caps has moved down there into the bot lane, I think you're just going to continue to see some of that uh, paint by numbers finger painting down there again, and for G2 to create another masterpiece. I absolutely love this. I love the idea of rock, paper, scissors when it comes to the champion matchups, and, and really how many teams in Europe are willing to experiment and explore. But I want to ask a bit more specifically why did the meta work for us? Why did it feel like the creativity for G2 was you know, successful, but then similarly, Fnatic and Splice, they had their own unique identities. It wasn't a, you know, a cheap ripoff of G2. I think when it comes to G2 specifically, the idea and the, the players just stand out. They are, they are individual players that are just not limited with some kind of role. Oh, this guy is a tank player. No, 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 this guy is a player that can play anything. I think that's the bottom line. This is the kind of step we're heading towards. As more and more rookies are heading into the scene, 
the, the level will also increase. There's no more role players, only good and strong players. And just to kind of build off of that, I think we're at a, a point in the game where the meta, the patches have shifted so much that it is no longer enough just to be a good mechanical player, to be smart at the game. It used to be something that you would talk about, like, oh, this guy's mechanically gifted, yeah. this guy's very intelligent. No, you have to be both. And if you're not, you've been patched out. And the G2s, the Invictus Gamings, the, the FPXs, they have shown that now. It's like, innovate or die. Hit the skill shot yeah. or walk. Play to your limits and test it every single day. If you don't break the game, you're not playing in the same game. Now, how did it feel when we zoom out a little bit? The fact that obviously G2 picks up the win at MSI, the fact that going into Worlds on home soil, everybody was watching, everybody was looking. I mean, Yamato, speak a little bit to what sort of pressure is put on you and the players last year, knowing that this league and these teams were really center stage. You know, it was it was a very big deal for Vitality because the finals was in Paris. You know, there was it was the thing that was spoken about always, always on the line. We went to the World Championship and then we just wanted more. And sometimes expectations can can bite you in the ass because yeah. you know the bottom line is you know sometimes it's tough to to break those expectations with the level of competition that we had. Well, we'll have to find out uh, how this year kicks us off. Looking back at 2019, it did give us many incredible moments. But some did stand out more than others. We're going to take a look at five of the best plays from last season. Uh, and honestly, a bit of uh, an overstep there from Humanoid trying to force that fight as Humanoid now goes in onto me. Remember, there's no flash on the Aurelia. He's going to try and dodge around here as Mystique is in range. Look for the Devour. Gets it out just in time. But he's best making back out. Mickey gets a kill on that. Starboard's coming out. And Excel will turn this one around. Zerti trying to trade it in. It's two. It's two for Excel. Decimating Smash comes down, but there's not a follow-up. Wonders hunting Cadrill, trying to get the shutdown gold. Cadrill is worth so much money, but look at the burst damage! Caps isn't done yet! He's got one, he's got two, he's gonna get taken down before he can find Cadrill. And Giant Prophet will be able to jump down. Prophet throws out the Cataclysm. Repel up, repel down. Prophet in a 4v1 is still surviving. He goes golden, buys enough time. Vitality, how can you mess this up? It's a 4 versus 1! Prophet's not done! The Golden Ages and Fulite arrives! How good am I? How good am I? How good am I? Good. To actually get a lot of these plates in the middle lane, but it's not actually allowing you to gain any. Oh! There's no way you should be able to hit that camp still able to get away, but Hillisang on the chase couldn't quite land a tier man. Hillisang, he's buying for the best pike in Europe. Camp strong! Oh, no way! No way! Through the heart of our Spring Split MVP! It's fine, we can turn this, we can turn this. Ready? Okay. Well, you don't say anything, but... Ready, he was ready. <laughs> oh, the shy and rookie. It's for oh, your highlights, guys, it's for your highlights. Yeah, yeah. it's for your highlights. It was worth. Now we can end, baby. Yeah, I will. I can rest hold. Unbelievable. Watching back some of those plays, it gets my heart racing again. And honestly, some I think the word disgusting and shocking, you can throw around a whole bunch. But what do you feel when you watch those plays, Ross? How good am I? How good am I? <laughs> I love hurts that. Me, man. It just hurts. It just rips up oh, all yeah, the wounds. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I actually, when I was uh, talking to Yamato and prepping for this show, I actually specifically called out that play as an example of being a little harsh when it comes to using <laughs> it on air. But you have to give credit to Vanda and, and Rogue for pulling that off. It's just memorable because everything was there, you know, the, the, the call from you, the comment from Vander, and yeah. also the play, everything was kind of aligned and it's a scar that I'll have to wear proudly one day. Sometimes watching a dumpster <laughs> fire truly is a beautiful thing. When did you realize it was turning though, like watching it backstage when you're like, oh yeah, my team's got this. Was there ever a moment like, oh, they don't. <laughs> I think someone, I think someone screwed up very early and then I was like, oh, I'm looking away, <laughs> you know, I'm looking away. I mean, uh, it, some, it, someone missed something or something. It happens a lot. Uh, the thing that was crazy was that it really felt like every single team had standout moments throughout the course of the split, whether good or bad. And it was just incredible to see the players and, and the plays. I, I hope we get more of it today. I hope we get more of the crazy innovation as well. Um, it's not all good news, though, when we look back and celebrate the incredible 2019, because it does also mark the end of an era. There are some true legends that have left our league. And just to rattle off a few names, Chachi, Soaz, Broxa, and Kobe will not be returning to the 2020 LEC season. I'm gonna start with Kobe, uh, Yamato. You know, how does it feel seeing this player leaving the region? Oh, it's uh, an amazing opportunity, of course, TSM is a, is a massive brand, but it, it stings a bit, you know? I remember when we played uh, the finals against G2, 
uh, back in 2016 in summer. Like we were lost 3-1. G2 was the more experienced team, and uh, I remember the pain that was in Kobe's eyes because he really, really played his heart out. And I remember telling him that you know if you just keep building your confidence, then you will conquer the world. And to not work with him any longer, and then to just see as much as he's grown the past days, it's been you know it's been amazing. You know, as a friend, as a former coach. I'm just worried when it go, comes to players sending them to North America, will they continue to improve? Because that's that's what's always the question. I mean, it, it just kind of feels like the reality is is that if you're not on Fnatic and if you're not on G2, you're not going to win the LEC. So these players have the option where they can either play for a mid-tier LEC team, kind of compete for maybe that world's ticket in a very stacked league, or they can go over to North America and play on the top teams. I think TSM are contender. You know yeah. that TL usually just win everything. So you got Broxa and Kabe. We're probably going to see them at Worlds. And hopefully, well, now that we've given them some European talent, the LCS will make it out of group stage. We'll have to see what they can do, of course. I'm excited to see what the EU players can do. But Yamato, uh, a little bit closer to home. Um, Splice, they've rebranded. They're no longer in the league. Uh, you know, how does it make you feel? Honestly, I think for me, when I look back at my career, the, the biggest like, kind of trampoline jump that happened was with Splice. And uh, it wasn't always good because on paper, you know, we were in relegations, the first split we played, but the, but the trust from the organization was there from day one. And that's what was so incredible about the organization. Even though we were in relegations, a lot of teams would just pull the plug, uh, toss, you know, Chop a lot of heads, you know, yeah. toss everything, move all the players. But I saw the quality in, for example, Wunder, Senkooks, Kobe, and also, of course, uh, uh, Cold, or trashy. at that time it was called Trashy. Yeah. And then I brought in Mickey X, I played duo Q with him, and he just came out of nowhere. I just recognized how much he loves the game. And then we just came back second place, and we went to the World Championship with a bunch of rookies. So this was... Uh, uh, a jump start for a lot of players and also for me and uh, I think the bottom line of it is uh, the trust was there from the beginning. So It is incredible when you see how four out of the five of those players, their career trajectories and um. where they have ended up from where they started uh, here in the league. Um, so it is definitely a heartfelt goodbye to Splice who had a fantastic 2019, the best of their career. You will be missed. Um, I do want to pick up and look a little bit now towards some uh, some new players that that mark themselves as stamped. Uh, we've lost some legends, but there's some new superstars that are ready to fill the shoes of the superstars who are left as they are in the EU curse system. Um, the EU ecosystem keeps producing talent. I'm going to make that a thing. Um, I want to start by talking about Nemesis, a guy that had the unenviable task of replacing Caps or Fnatic. Oh, already that line, you know, it summarizes it. Nemesis, you know, they had a rough start, but eventually he delivered. And I think Nemesis was clearly, clearly the second best mid laner in Europe behind Caps, even in the finals and in also whatever the first portion of playoffs is called in those two best of fives. <laughs> round it one. was very, very close. I know Vitality's not used yeah. to making it. <laughs> He's new here as well, right? So round one, round two. We'll teach you the terminology. Round one, round two. Okay. In those best of fives, <laughs> Nemesis was fighting closely with Caps. And for me, the biggest question is always that synergy with the jungler. I didn't feel like it was really there. And with Selfmade, they have history. Him coming in, I think, finally, we can maybe cover some of those weaknesses that Nemesis has. And of course, he was rookie of the split for spring Selfmade. And that's the big question mark then. It's that these guys used to work together in the ERL, formerly on Mad Lions. They're now paired together on Fnatic. And I'm actually really curious where Young Buck started and Fnatic began, because are we going to see Selfmade be molded into that Broxa, uh, where he's kind of ganking out into side lanes, or is Selfmade going to be his own man in this team? Is it going to be Nimi and Selfmade just blitzing through foes and turning Fnatic into a number one team? I mean, it's so exciting to think about, because Fnatic has a proven history of developing and building successful teams. They are champions contenders in every split that they play. I'm going to ask you to answer that question. What do you think Selfmade is going to do on this squad? Oh, well, I hope that he actually attacks. The thing about Selfmade is he kind of... I think people underrated him in the jungle, especially nice. when you had so many uh, big jungle names around the LEC. But Selfmade beating Fnatic kind of right out that gate in that best of three really <laughs> made a name for himself very <laughs> early on. Soon. I think it's too soon. It's a year ago now, but it still counts. <laughs> uh, let's turn our attention to another rookie that stepped up last year, uh, Larson. Um, Yamato, what do you think? I like him. I like him a lot. You know, he came in in this uh, generation of all these new mid lanes coming into the picture. Nemesis, Humanoid, Abedage. And I think the biggest difference maker between Lazen and the other two, I think, or the other three, is the fact that I feel like he's so diverse. Right. You know, I feel like Humanoid, Abedage, maybe rely really too, too much on Akali and Akiana. Please, for the love of God, nerf these champions. They're too OP. And I think 
they, it was shown throughout the year, and they haven't been nerfed yet. So that's you a big have a question. mic doesn't mean you can influence balance <laughs> changes here. <laughs> but Martin. Larson, very diverse. I like it. I think wherever the meta goes, I think he can follow. So I'm excited about that. And the thing is, is we're going to be talking about so many of the Rogue players. You're going to hear their name coming out of our mouth all the time because Rogue is kind of like the hot team to watch right now. And it's not just because of Larson. It's also because of Finn up into that top lane. I think, uh, again, very stacked talent. I, when we were doing our top 20s, I was like looking at all of the players in the LAC. I'm like, we don't really have just any like bad F tier <laughs> players anymore. There's, there's so many competitive names. I'm excited about Finn. Obviously very well known for his cled. I want to see his champion pool continue to expand. But I think his ability to create leads and then give that to his team makes him a standout uh, top laner, a very young, uh, very young guy. Sorry, Medic, who just <laughs> has more time to grow in this league. It's really, really exciting because we've got all these successful rookies from 2019, which is great. It's amazing. It's a healthy league. But now it puts all the pressure on all the new rookies starting in 2020. We're going to see four of them in our first game of G2 versus Mad. But then when you step back and you think that all of these players have come from ERLs, the regional leagues, the, the talent development system, it's, it's working. It, it continues to deliver. There's like, what, 14 new rookies coming in. Most of them were just gobbled up from Mouse, B, uh, Big, and Giants. And I mean, it's, it's crazy. I mean, what, what is it like when you're farming players? You know, I love it because I've always been a big advocate for taking in new players, taking risks. And I think the obligation for the lower tier teams is to take risk. You have to bring out new players that eventually G2 will pick up when they're well, good enough. The exciting you know? <laughs> thing now is who will be the lower tier team? We are going to start our games in 30 minutes time. We don't know what's going to happen. And we are nearing the end of our 2019 retro. There's just one thing we haven't done yet. And it's thank you guys at home. We want to thank the fans. We want to say thank you so much for tuning in, for watching, supporting not only the the broadcast, but the teams, the players, the organizations for giving us your time and your love and your passion and supporting all the crazy things that we do. Honestly, it's just, it, it's crazy. We have to turn our attention to 2020. We have to keep this up. And I cannot wait to see how well this is going to go. So like, thank you so much again. Thank you from Yamato, from Frost. Oh, my God. Oh my God. It's an absolute oh. pleasure. Don't they get tired of hearing their own voices? I would fall asleep right here if I wasn't an insomniac. What, what was that, what? 30 minutes? We're, we're live. Oh. We're live. Sorry. Uh, hello. Good evening. I'm awake. I'm awake. Welcome to LEC Update, the show you never thought you needed. And once you've seen it, you're going to know for sure. I'm Efi de Portre. And I'm Christy Frierson. Well, 2019 was such a successful opening season for the LEC that we figured we'd ruin it by making a sequel that has no chance of living up to the hype of the first one. So get ready for the post-Worlds G2's tragedy arc, the rogue from rags to riches storyline, and many more significantly worse versions of Vedius. But hey, at least we won't have to play an LPL team for another five months. It's a new year and a new LEC. And you know what that means, New Year's resolutions. Quickshot promised he won't say legacy or kings. Medic won't get fooled by someone's real age again. And Dracos will release his private SoundCloud. Just like many of you said you'd go to the gym in the new year, and we all know how that's gonna turn out. And uh, speaking of music and the opening, why weren't either of us involved in what? the LEC music video? I mean, I've heard you at karaoke. You're amazing. You wouldn't even need all that auto-tune to sound bearable. I mean, that song just proved that anyone can be a pop star if they have a half-decent producer. Yeah, we're, we're not salty, but I still think we should make our oh, own band. Uh, it's time uh, for our 2020 roster rundown, so do the thing. We have a thing? Oh. Seriously? Seriously? Well, Misfits made a big move this offseason. No one expected this legend to return to the pro scene, let alone move to Europe. But after seeing him pop off in the TCS, I, for one, am looking forward to seeing the kid, Voy Boy, return to the Rift. No, 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 no. It's not Voy Boy. It's B Voy. B Voy. B Voy, Korean player, played on Young Miracle, played on Royal oh, Club. Okay. Uh, B Boy, V Boy, th that guy, whatever. Uh, that's like. That's kind of like the DLC no Misfits fan ever asked for. Sure, he's probably all right, but that's like adding the eighth Fire Emblem hero to the roster when he could have had Waluigi. I didn't get any of those references, but I'm a boomer, so whatever. Uh, some of the biggest off-season news came out of Schalke, signing the legendary Forgiven after a three-year hiatus, and also Gilead. Now, both players are infamous for their egos and banter, but there's one key difference between the two. Forgiven is a talented trash talker. Gilead is talking trash. 
With these two players on the same team, I don't think fans would be surprised if the spring season spawned the first ever esports true crime documentary. And after spring split, Gilius might have more in common with Vitality than you think. I can't sense a sign of life from that roster either. But either way, I think it's fair to say Gilius getting picked up by Schalke was the best news Kikis has heard all year. It's also a shame that we lost Splice right after such a great showing at Worlds, making the quarterfinals for the first time in the organization's history. Seeing EU fans support them at Worlds was truly wonderful. But let's be honest, before Worlds, Splice had less fans than they did players. But now we have Mad Lions, a Spanish org with tons of fans and an EU Masters title. But after losing Vizichachi, Xerxi, Norskaren, and Kabi, I think now Mad Lions have less real players than Splice had real fans. Speaking of Kabe and TSM, I love their new jersey design. They put stars on their jersey to represent their six LCS titles. So I can't say, wait to see their World's 2020 jersey that represents their international victories. Wait, didn't they win an IEM once? Right. Uh, for years, the biggest rivalry in League of Legends has been EU versus NA. But due to the lack of competition the last decade, we here in the LEC think we should change our focus. To bring us her insight on the budding rivalry between the LEC and the LPL, that Chinese fangirl. Yeah, uh, thanks, Christy. Yeah, I lived in Shanghai, and let me tell you, the firewall was great, the lights were beautiful, architecture was breathtaking. Oh my god, though, the food. The food was amazing. I was only hospitalized once, but the spicy hot pot was so Okay, hold up, hold up. It. This isn't supposed to be an ad for the tourism board. Talk to me about the players. How do they, how do they stack up against European talent? Talent? Did you just say that? Yeah, okay, sure. Let's play a game. I'll name an LPL player, and you tell me an LEC player that's better. I'll start first. Okay. The Shy. Well, that, that's not fair. Okay, how about Rookie? Well, I mean, we have caps and perks this year, so we can flex them between a lot of new champions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, have you ever heard of Knight? Okay, I, I get your point. Yeah, so about this whole LPL versus LEC rivalry, wouldn't you prefer just to keep it EU versus NA? I mean, otherwise, when you design a Worlds jersey for this year, it's gonna look a lot like this. Wait, 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 we did win Worlds once. Why does everyone keep forgetting this? They won, okay? Yeah, remind me what region that was from. Well, we beat a team in the final that was also from EU, but you can only beat what's in front of you. It still counts. Uh, nah, it doesn't count. That was also 10 years ago. Okay, how are we... <sighs> Here's to another decade of EU versus NA. That Chinese fangirl, everybody. For LEC Update, I'm Ify the Porter. And I'm Christy Frierson. I mean, come on, that's ludicrous. Besides, this year we're gonna win. Look, gonna we, win. Can, we can agree on one thing, right? We're both better than... Well, then you got a little spoiler, but welcome back to the start of the new LEC season. Yamato is new here, so he doesn't know when his mic is actually, in fact, already open. Uh, regardless, over the next weeks, we're going to see some epic battles. Tears will be shed, and in the end, we will crown our spring champions. As I also introduce my guests here for the remaining of Ready Check, Ender and Yamato. Thank you for joining me, and welcome to... 2020 LEC. Yeah, we got we got to welcome you, Amato, again. I know we already did it over there, but we're at least new with you, so you know it's a lot Thank of fun. You. Even though Thank I feel you. like we've done every finals LEC finals <laughs> desk for the last like year and a half, but yeah. who am I to say? Happy New Year, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. Happy, I love how like, Happy New Year. You have to keep saying that when you see someone for the first it's time. It's almost it's February. Like in, March, uh, in any case, how are we feeling about the new season? I know you just spent some time talking. So, Ender, tell me then in a non-LEC update way, what are we hyped for this year in the LEC? I mean, we're hyped for more of it, first of all. Last yeah. year was just our first year. We won an MSI title. We went to finals uh, in, in Worlds as well. So, I just think we're in store for a lot of new, exciting talent. We've got new players. We've got a new team. And we're just going to and see more top-notch League of Legends. Yeah, we'll see indeed. And the fact that there's so much new talent once again, you always wonder who is going to be that next superstar, who's going to pop off this spring and summer. We are about to find out. And uh, there was, of course, some huge news once again. And at the beginning of the split, and Medivedi have the scoop. 
Uh, thank you very much, Shox. I'm Medi. This is Vedi. And Hello. we're joined by Perks and Caps. That hello was necessary there, Vedius. Thank you so much. So, uh, Perks, when Caps joined the team in 2019, you decided to move down to the ADK role. Now you're back in mid lane. What's made this decision happen? Well, uh, it was a mutual decision in the team. I guess I get, played one year of Wotan, and now he's going to play. Maybe not, maybe not one year, maybe he will, we don't know yet, right? So we are mostly just experimenting. I think we have a lot of uh, room to experiment with this roster and we felt like a change is not like bad after such a long year. So we like mix it up a bit, you know, spice it up and see how it goes. And yeah, we just don't have anything to lose, honestly. So we are open to new trials. Now, Caps, tell me, Similar sort of question. When you initially joined G2, it was to improve the team overall. Now tell me, who do you think will replace Perks this time in the mid lane? That's a pretty fair question. Uh, so I've seen Carlos has begun to, to practice his mid lane again, and he really wants to get the world title. And with us going as far as the world final last year, he wants to be like the, the nail in the coffin and making sure we get that fight touch. Great answer. Thank you very much, Caps. Uh, so waiting to be replaced by Ocelot, apparently, in the mid lane there, Perks. Uh, is there anyone in the LEC at the moment in mid lane that you think might challenge your lane kingdom? <laughs> um, honestly, I don't really know because I haven't played um, I haven't played against any of the mid... I think all the mid laners besides Nuke are new. Um, new, I mean, <laughs> I guess they are since last year, right? But like, they, I've never played against them. So I don't really know um, who is supposed to be good or not. But I don't really uh, think there's anyone that's like really great. So a lot of them have like different strengths. So it's it's going to be interesting to see who is actually good or not, yeah. Huh? Now, it's interesting that Perk says that, Cats, because when you joined, you actually solo killed Perks. Do you remember how many times? Um, I, I don't really have the count on my hand. Yeah, it was a really big number. I don't really remember either. So how many times do you think Perks will be solo killed this split? Uh, well, hopefully none, but uh, we'll see. Maybe Miki can help him out. Maybe Miki can help him out. Medic. Uh, if you need a support in the mid lane as well as in the bot lane, I've uh, lost a little bit of faith in you there, Perks. Uh, we're talking about this change. You said it's experimentation. Last year, you guys made it to the World's Finals. Obviously, things didn't go your way. Do you think this is the change that will get a World Championship back in Europe? Mm, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not quite sure, honestly. We will see. We uh, we will see how we, we progress, right? I think as of right now, we are like a little bit shaky in scrims, but uh, my middle will be will be improved over time, I believe. I think I am known as a playoff player, and like uh, I get the world's buff as well. So I think that there, there is like a long time for me to improve yeah. to reach my level. But uh, as of right now, I'm just looking to like yeah, not get solo killed as Vedius mentioned. So <laughs> I, I hope you can keep the world's buff going through the finals next time as well. That would be great. Yeah, it's yeah, interesting okay. that they talk about the world finals, cats, because when we look at you on Fnatic, you made the world finals in the mid lane. And then again on G2, when you played in the mid lane, you again made it to the world finals. Now you're moving to AD Carry. Are we sure we're going to make another world finals this year? Uh, well, we are, we are swapping around so that we can actually win the world final because that's kind of like the missing piece. <laughs> uh, I think we're making it to the world final, that's like, that's like the last two years, you know, that's easy peasy. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's fair enough. A lot of confidence coming out from Kat, so we're going to send it back to the analyst desk. <laughs> Thank you very much. I uh, love it that we heard it from themselves. Uh, don't take it too seriously, it seems like. It's not written in stone that uh, Caps is going to stay in that ball. Anyway. Yeah, am, am I the only one that wants more Medi Vedi intros? Like, this is great. <laughs> or uh, interviews, not interviews, intros. Interviews. I would like some more intros, though. They've, they were great last year. That is true. <laughs> Talking about G2, too, uh, I do want to go into a kind of a discussion about who won the off season here in EU and I'm going to start by talking about G2 and this new graphic you know same players but they did move around the model what do you think of this change overall and how do you think it's going to help G2 throughout I, this year I just feel like it speaks about their approach in general I feel like if their eyes is on winning worlds last year they had to take a break after MSI into summer I think if you want to go hard in summer then this is the type of fun you have to have and <laughs> the biggest win that G2 have is that they maintained all of their players too right after having such a successful 2019 
game. So it's fantastic to see out of them that they're going to bring back, one, back once again and maybe have a little bit more fun in spring. We'll see. What's quite interesting as well is when you look at what they can do on the Rift, uh, we know now that Perks, he was a great mid laner. He did very well in that bottom lane, and we can assume he's going to grow into doing very well in that mid lane once again. But Caps, that's kind of the wild card here because we know he's a great mid laner, but we don't have any proof that he's a decent bottom laner. So what can we kind of predict for that bottom lane performance? Honestly, we sort of heard it from them in the interview. It feels like they said they're looking to experiment. They're looking to have a little bit more fun. I just think this team needed a mix-up after a brutal, exhausting 2019 where they didn't have a single break. Every tournament they played in, they went all the way to the final. Yeah, we'll see how it evolves. Very excited to see G2 on the Rift. When we talk about winning the offseason, I want to bring up Rogue. Rogue, a team that only had their first year in the LEC last year and was growing visibly throughout that year, also booking that playoffs spot. What do you think of the current roster? Well, the current roster can only be an upgrade, right? You looked at last year, Rogue's weakness was in the bottom lane. Now they've brought in Han Sama, who we know has been a fantastic laning marksman player in the past, and I think he's going to do great things for this team. Team. But the biggest question is, how does the, per per uh, the perspective shift for this team really affect them? Because all of 2019, no one ever believed in this team, right? In, in spring split, they finished in 10th place. In summer, they only barely made the playoffs. They had to win so many of their games in the final weeks just to make it. And then we forgot about them because they didn't have enough championship points to play in the regional qualifier to try and make it to world. So this team was on the up and up. And with this change, they're going to look even better. I think overall, I've checked like the temperature in the community and I I feel like, uh, you know, people think that analysts are overrating Rogue, but I think the kind of trajectory we saw at the end of the split, after they did the roster decisions in spring, it looked kind of terrible. Into summer, we saw that main weakness in the bottom, and Han Sama, I've just viewed him in solo queue because that's the information you have to work with, yeah. and it's been looking great. And also he was subbing in for the Misfits kind of when they did the switches, mm -hmm. he was also looking great. So I think this is this is the right combination for Han Sama, I team think, of young yeah, players. I think that's a great point last year, what was kind of the dumpster fire of, of Misfits, but Hansama was still showing up when he was fielded. And now he finds himself in a combination of players who have shown throughout the year that they have a certain um, growth path in ahead of them, as I see Ender giggling for some reason. <laughs> well, I mean, he's so <laughs> killing you, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, All he right. to really, truly display his skill. Yeah, yeah. So We're showing you, you just how good this guy is. He yeah. can kill a support all by himself, which nowadays with the Nautiluses and the Alonas <laughs> of the world, that's not very easy, guys. I say so. Uh, talking about winning the offseason, the discussions we also had in the office the last couple of weeks, and you two said unanimously, for us, it is origin, Yamato. Why uh, is that? For sure. Like, if you look at the big names, that were like, you know, these are the ones that you want to grab. Xerxes, Upset, Kobe went to North America, sure, but Upset and Xerxes are huge, huge pickups, huge, huge upgrades. I don't think there's anyone out there that is going to deny it. If you do, you know, come call me at my phone. We can discuss it. I'll convince you. No problem. Yeah, What's I mean, that number or? <laughs> actually, no, no, no. <laughs> don't, don't give it to him. I mean, the, the number I'll tell you guys is four out of the five players on this team can make a case for being top two in their respective positions. So this roster, I think, was built directly to attempt to challenge G2. I want to see them grow into that uh, over the course of the split. Yeah, it's very interesting. Of course, so Origin, I always had the feeling that they peaked in the split or in the season, and then they lost their way, and nobody could really tell us why, including the people on the team, it seemed like, when we talked to the Fischio and whatnot. And I wonder if this new injection of the new players will, will send them back on the right path. I think that's the thing that kind of gives us a little bit of seed of distrust because in yeah. spring they were so great and then everyone was kept saying, ah, they will come back. They will come back. The way, the way they came back in spring, they will come back always. And it just never happened. So this is just, you know, a big question that we have to lay out though. It is, and they have a big test ahead of them today immediately because the two Titans, Fnatic and Origin, they both made some big moves in the off season and later tonight they are facing off in our Alienware match of the week. Fnatic and OG were the peak of what European legends could look like. We got to see the rebirth of this rivalry. And in 2020, we get to see them clash at full strength. For Fnatic, for Reckless, this was a disappointing world. And they definitely have something to prove. It's going to be a dead Fnatic. Fun plus Phoenix have shut down Fnatic. I truly believed SKT and RNG were the, the best teams at the tournament. If we could beat them, 
um, we could win the entire thing. <laughs> yeah, 2019 made me realize that it's not so easy and there are a lot of people that are hungry for victory. And if I don't show the same hunger, I, I will not reach it. I expect 2020 to be my best year so far. Origin, go in and go down in a heartbeat! We kind of became uh, stuck. It got into everyone's head. We had a lot of mental blocks that stopped us from not only performing on stage, but also improving in practice. What keeps me on the top of my game is that I still didn't win a split yet, and I would really like to do it. Origin are crumbling to G2. Now I think I got you know the perfect guys to help me with it. It's gonna be the decade after that. Upset, just cleaning up the fight. Somehow got the triple. Somehow got the penta. The main man is counted. In this new Origin team, finally everyone that was considered underrated has the chance to show how good they really are with talented teammates all around them. Our expectations for this lineup in Fnatic is for sure to become the best team in Europe. I think I'm on my way to become the best jungler Europe has ever seen. <laughs> my first match in Fnatic Colors, so I will have to give my best to prove fans that it was worth to get me. I honestly could not be more excited for Origin versus Fnatic, because at the end of the day, this can be such a defining game for your split. I love the fire and the bravado coming out of self-made ahead of this match of the week. And before we discuss this matchup, you can also vote on who you think will win. Just spam FNC or OG in chat right now. And we are going to give you something to think about and maybe sway your vote when it comes to Fnatic and Origin. They are, of course, two top teams in, Euro, as, in Europe, rather, as said Origin, making it to a finals. Fnatic always being toe-to-toe -to -toe with G2 in summer, now stepping in to uh, this match of the week. Is it expected that with the changes on the lineups, we can count them into that top three this year as well? I think right now, at least in my mind, there's like a clear top four as far as expectations go going into the split. We have our G2, we have Fnatic, we have Origin, we have Rogue. In though, you can mix those around right now, I think underneath G2, who are the expected number one, but these two teams are the ones that were directly built to compete with the top, and this game actually matters a ton for them just to set the season off on the right track. I think when it comes to Fnatic's Specifically, the biggest difference maker between Fnatic and the two other teams, I think, is the fact that they are gunning for the trophies. They're gunning for the trophies big time. And with this in mind, I think they're going to have a slow start. I think if you're going to work in a way where you want to build as much diversity as possible, you're going to kind of have a rocky kind of path to that point. So I think you have to make sure that you just don't play hard on bottom like last year. We'll see how uh, they will change it up. But as you say, they will have to change because Broxa is no longer on Fnatic. And before we get into the in-game play style and how that might change the team, we also have to acknowledge the big factor that Broxa was in that lineup, also outside of the Rift. He was a bit of a captain. He always talked to us and, and did interviews when it wasn't going so well in the team and he really grew with that squad. But now he is out and Selfmade is in. Yeah, and Selfmade comes in as more of this wild card because whereas Broxa was this player where Fnatic really relied on him to play for his lanes. You know, he would listen to where they wanted him to be on the map and he would do that thing. Selfmade came from an SK team that was down, you know, towards the bottom end of the league. And it was the Selfmade show every single game where it was him playing for himself, him trying to make things happen. So now my question is, Coming into Fnatic, is he the self-made man or is he the Fnatic-made man? Will they change him to fit their play style or will he be his own person? It's such a difference as well because in SK, a self-made was very clear that he was the blood of the team. He was the, a big fish in a small pond. Now he's surrounded by a whole lot of sharks even, you know, <laughs> strong personalities with a lot of experience. So he's going to turn into a completely different player, I imagine. Maybe he's going to be more uh, safe or something else, but I hope with the new jungle changes that he is greedy and hungry. And that he's absolutely 
ferocious, not just on the rift. We saw changes for Fnatic, also in the coaching staff. Mithy is now uh, at the helm. And that's a huge loss on paper, right? You take the six-star general, you know, Young Buck, who had won so many titles here in Europe, and now he's gone, especially when you are bringing in a younger player to fill a pivotal role like Jungle. That brings up a really interesting dynamic between Mithy, who's stepping into his first ever coaching position, and a potentially, you know, volatile player in the jungle as well with self-made. Like the thing that always comes to my mind is the contrast between G2 and Fnatic. And in terms of firepower of game knowledge and figuring out ways to be a step ahead of the enemy, Mithy is the right guy to bring on. So I think, think if they figure out the culture, figure out a way to work together, figure out a way to make sure the personalities are in, not in the way, this can be very, very deadly. Could be a fantastic fit, and as you say there, you come into that Fnatic system, but also the pedigree and the history of the titles across esports, and everyone who steps onto the rift with them has to live up to that expectation. Not in the least, in this first match of the week, versus Origin, Mithy up versus his ex-team, of course. And we talked about it a little already. What is so good about the changes that Origin made coming into this year? I mean, they were trying to pick all the best players from around the league that they possibly could find. You look top to bottom lane, they are stacked with talent. And then there's this question in the air, which is Destiny and what his role within this team is, because I know a lot of LEC fans aren't going to be super familiar with this guy, but word on the street was when he was here for Worlds that he was a scrim god and that actually a lot of LEC teams were eyeing him up. So this is something that could be a wild card for the squad. Yeah, Destiny coming from the OPL also went to Worlds with Mammoth and played on the Chiefs and he has a very big history over in the OPL, but how much will that translate into this lineup? Honestly, I'm not convinced. Okay. I'm super convinced by the Origin top side because I think Xerxes can cover up the weaknesses of Alfari and Nuktak. I think they struggle to work together with the jungler and Xerxes is very, very vocal. I think that's what's so amazing about him. He plays many different champions. We remember the Zac, the Ivan, the Warwick in the Golo days. Plays the meta too. Elise, Lee Sin and whatever Sejuani you want, right? So I think he's very, very diverse and he can be the leader that Origin will need in order to compete so with the best. So you went from winning the offseason and now I'm hearing covering up weaknesses and we have some question marks about about the support position, which one is it? So it's definitely a win. My only question mark is the support position. Okay. I have full faith in Xerxes because like Yamato was saying, he was a very, very vocal on that old splice lineup. But I think on that team, he had to micromanage some of his teammates. Mm. And that ended up leading to a lot of stress in the mid games. We remember those issues on this team. I don't think he has to be as focused on every single little detail that his players are doing. We'll see. We're also going to check in with what our fans are voting Fnatic at 60% for now of the OG and Fnatic, of course, two of our most popular or more popular teams, but it is pretty close then. Um, let's look at the bottom lane. We talked about the support, but that upset change is also so huge for Origin, going from the boys in blue to the other boys in blue and still waiting for that breakout performance in a final or an international tournament. He hasn't necessarily always gotten the chance. Is this his year? I think it's difficult to say because I think when I look at this team, I think his support player is a role player and always the bot lane is defined who you're partnering with. So mm -hmm. I think that's super, super important. And at the same time, Upset was the big star on a Schalke roster that was designed to do everything for him. And he did that wonderfully. You know, when he gets the resources, he delivers. But I think solid would be the word that I would use for upset. Yeah, upset, in my mind, is one of our best team fighting AD carries in the entire league. Whether it comes to his positioning, his target selection, his knowledge of when to flash backwards or to flash forward, those are the important things when you are playing this position. And I think he is right at the top tier in our league. But the AD carry position is so stacked. It's so stacked. You know, that's why I have limitations here in what I'm saying about upset because there are so many new AD carries coming in and on top of the team fighting prowess, like if you look at the top of the table, like Reckless or, or Perks, I don't know what to think about Cavs, but Reckless, <laughs> for example, team fight power, lane power, everything power, no weaknesses, you know? So in the past, it was okay to say this guy is great in team fighting, but now you need to be so much more. You need to be so much more. So very diverse. Reckless versus upset we're going to see in our match of the week. That is the last game of the day, but we have four others and game one is just around the corner. Let's take a look. See, all those 80 carries will be in action today, including, of course, Forgiven and Schalke facing off against XL. Be sure to stay tuned for that one. As you can see, they're highlighted in green. The first match of the LEC 2020 G2 Esports versus the rookies of the Mad Lions, and they are eager to show what they are worth versus the most dominant lineup in EU history. Now, Mad Lions, formerly Splice, we're not going to keep saying it, but we 
do need to get acquainted by it. But I'm so excited to see Mad Lions as a brand, but also the players they've fielded in this lineup. Well, they've gone through one of the biggest overhauls, not just in the name as well, but also the players, right? Humanoid is the only player you will remember from the previous roster. Even though Arome was there, he didn't have the same time in the spotlight as Humanoid. But for me, I am most excited about this bottom lane with Karzi down there. Karzi came off of being the EU Masters Finals MVP, and I think he's one of our most exciting uh, marksman talent coming into the league. This guy is good. This guy is aggressive. He will go forward in fights, sometimes to his detriment, but he's going to pop off. <laughs> so here we see, of course, we have some Syndra highlights, but he also plays marksman. Yeah, he plays uh, everything. <laughs> he also picture. played Echo Bot lane, I think, in two games. Oh, he ran it down, though. <laughs> he ran, he ran it, it straight down, but that'll give you a better idea of this player. He's willing to experiment on different picks and in his gameplay as well. My eye is on him for a potential rookie to split later down the road. Yeah, for sure. I think when you look at the lineup like that, like the one Mad Lions has, it is just this is the type of team that could be a kind of dark horse. Always at the World Championship, usually we're sending a new team that is not expected to kind of rise above of the ranks. I think Mad Lions could definitely be that. All of a sudden, maybe Ooh. we have some future G2 members on this team. Who knows? So for a coach that famously brought, of course, the rookies of Vitality to Worlds, are your spidey senses tingling when you see some of the players of this roster? Tell me, outside of Karzi, what do you think of the players on this roster and who could pop off? I think Humanoid, you know, I think in terms of what he performed in his first year, you know, we talk about Nemesis and what he does in his first year. I think Humanoid can be turned into kind of a leader on this team. Mm -hmm. If he kind of branches out into champion pool. I have heard very good things about Shadow. He has Italian. I think Jizuke has told me some secret things, you know. <laughs> that's, that's good. I'm very, very happy for Kaiser, not only because of his name. Kaiser Sose! For other things too. For other things too. I've heard a lot of good things because I think we need, you know, more and better supports here. Yeah, I believe Shadow, I've heard too, you know, had some LDL offers, which mm -hmm. is the LPL Development League right underneath that too. So that's another exciting player to look at who's sort of been around the globe playing for a ton of dis different rosters. Even though to the LEC, this is rookie talent, not necessarily if you looked at his, you know, trajectory over the years. Yeah, it's very hard to look at this, uh, this match of players that know each other well, also played in the Spanish League, played in the U Masters in the circuits and VIG, and we'll see what happens, but... Let's look at that first game. They're up versus G2 Esports. They can huddle all they want, but it is going to be hard. <laughs> They're smiling now, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> they are smiling now. Um, hardest opponents possible, fair to say, <laughs> even though Jankos is still his jolly old self. Uh, reigning champions, G2 Esports. Now, we talked about them a fair bit already, and obviously we're going to talk about them a fair bit more as the season progresses. But what do you think their specific mindset is coming into the first week of LEC? It is going, this match determines so much because we saw the giggly interview that they had, you know, yeah. talking about, oh, maybe I will enter, maybe I won't, Caps. You know, I heard some words about how he's doing. I've seen this kind of streams with Mickey and Caps that also didn't look too great because they are testing limits, is yeah. what they call it. So I don't know. Maybe they're taking kind of uh, the spring split off. Maybe they're taking easy. Maybe they ramp it up before playoffs. It is... Uh, a defining moment for what kind of a G2 we will have in spring. Can yeah. you compare it to the beginning of G2 last year when they, of course, made that oh. big change and uh, Perks went to the bot lane? Oh, it's crazy because last year, you know, G2 came in and they had so much to prove. Caps coming into mid lane to the rival team after being in Fnatic at the World Finals. That is already a big deal. Misfits with Mickey had a disaster of a split. Mickey needed to reprove himself. Perks coming into the AD carry position, a lot to prove. So they went in gun blazing and they destroyed everybody in spring in comparison to the summer, which was kind of a jolly split, right? Because they needed to take it easy. Yeah, and coming into 2020, this team doesn't really have anything left to prove in Europe, right? They, they won an MSI, they won both titles during the regular season. You know, they have the long game that they're looking towards, and that's why I think, as we heard them mention, Spring Split is about experimentation. Spring Split is about resetting, re uh, like rejuvenating themselves, mm -hmm. because last year was grueling. They had no time off until they lost in the World Finals. So this split, I think it will get off to a much slower start, but you expect the same G2 to show up when it matters. Yeah, we'll see what happens indeed. And when you tell me those things, then I'm inclined to say, well, it's definitely Mad Lions time, then it is their chance to take this first game, but it is so hard to bet against G2 Esports after we saw last year. If Mad Lions take this first game, where is it going to come from? What is going to make the difference, Yamato? I just, it's kind of a strange thing to say, but I feel like it's just the underline for me is what is G2 bringing to the table? Mm -hmm. Of course, I think the question was aimed at what should I look at in Mad Lions? Because oh, I think from answer every... Answer it how you like. From every angle, I think they can definitely... Uh, find ways to do it. That's why I think 
they're such a dark horse because I don't think there's any specific weakness that stands out. I think everyone there can definitely turn into a superstar. Yeah, I got the, I got the how to beat G2 one, two, threes right yeah. here, okay? One, grabs Ince in draft. <laughs> two, caps Ince in the bot lane. Or three, Perks gets solo killed by a new mid laner. And I know Humanoid's <laughs> not a new mid laner, but he's, he's used to it by now. He should have a good shot. I heard through the grapevine <laughs> that there's a lot of deaths racked up by uh, caps and scrims, but yeah. we'll see if that translates on to the rift. Uh, however, the wait is finally over as the LEC Spring Split kicks off with G2 versus Mad Lions. Toss a coin to your casa. It's Medi and Betty. It's Medi and Betty. Time. Medi Betty, let's go. New rosters, new teams, and it's the first series ever of the LEC in 2020. It's a new decade, everyone, and I am very excited for some League of Legends. Yeah, and we're back for a banger with G2 Esports versus Mad Lions. Of course, the rebranded yeah. Splice. A lot of new players, a lot of new faces. One in particular is in the top lane. We have seen Arome before. We have. He has subbed in for Splice in the past, but I'm excited to see how he will stack up against the likes of Wonder, a player that didn't have the strongest 2019, but still considered one of the best top laners that we have here in Europe. Yeah, I think a lot of people still put him in the top three or so. We'll see 